We ended our last video talking about the necessary technical skills for a data scientist. But what is a data scientist overall? And why does one need Python for data science? Let's analyze these further in this video. By the end of this video, you will be able to list some of the traits of modern data scientists, explain why Python is a good programming language for data science, and recite four major Python modules that are useful for data analysis. You have probably seen diagrams like this one that describes data science. Data science happens at the intersection of computer science, mathematics, and business or scientific expertise. If we zoom deeper into this diagram and open up these sets of expertise, we would see a variation of this figure. Even at this level, all of these boxes require deeper knowledge and skills in areas like domain expertise, data engineering, statistics, and computing. And even deeper analysis of these skills based on data science job listings would lead you to skills like machine learning, statistical modeling, relational algebra, business passion, problem solving, and data visualization. That's a lot of skills to have for a single person. Given such a wide range of skills across multiple definitions of data scientists seems impossible. Some folks have even begun to ask if data scientists are like unicorns, meaning they don't exist. I want to point out that there are data science experts who has expertise in more than one of these skills for sure, but they're relatively rare and still would probably need help from an expert on some of these areas. So in reality, data scientists are teams of people who act like one. This is why we say data science is team sport, referring to the breadth of information and skills it takes to make it happen. However, there are still common traits to a data scientist. For example, data scientists are passionate about the story and meaning behind data. They understand the problem they are trying to solve and aim to find the right analytical methods to solve this problem. And they all have an interest in engineering solutions to solve problems. They also have curiosity about each other's work and have communication skills to interact within a team and present their ideas and results to others. These mostly soft skills are very important for success in any data science team. In this course, we'll focus on providing you with technical skills, in particular, some programming and data analysis skills, but we'll also remind you about these soft skills from time to time. But what data tools should you pick? According to a recent article on KD Nuggets, based on skills and jobs data from Indeed.com, Python is a clear leader in many data science categories. Although learning any of the programming languages shown here, including R, Java, C, Scala, and Julia, is a good idea, there are specific reasons why we picked Python and why employers are looking for these skills. Instead of explaining why Python is a good language for data science, let's focus on why data scientists love Python. In addition to being an easy to learn and readable language, Python is an open language with a vibrant community. Thanks to the efforts of this community, it offers an ever-growing set of data management, analytical processing, and visualization libraries, some of which we will review in this course. Such libraries make Python applicable to every step of the data science process. Lastly, but very importantly, the Jupyter Notebooks make Python-based analysis more reproducible and repeatable, as well as provides built-in training and communication support to help with team communication. Throughout the rest of this course, we will learn about some of the most powerful Python libraries and apply them to case studies ranging from simple soccer data analysis to astrophysics and satellite image analysis. We will start by learning about Jupyter Notebooks, followed by NumPy and Pandas to ingest and analyze data efficiently. 
We will add the visualization libraries, including Matplotlib, and continue with applying machine learning libraries in scikit-learn to create models. We will add libraries like Beautiful Soup to easily read in XML and HTML type data and go over some of the examples of working with databases. We hope you will enjoy this technical programming and learning journey as much as we did.